Hi there, this lesson is A Level Mechanics, Forces on Slopes. So the objectives are to learn how to identify and calculate parallel and normal reaction forces acting on an object on a slope. And then we're going to solve some more complex slope problems. So I'll give you an example first of all. I'm going to show you a technique that's very important and you should practice this technique until you know it really well. And then you can apply it to any question that needs it applied to. So this block has a weight of 700 newtons and we're going to calculate the normal reaction force and calculate the force parallel to the ramp. So I'm going to give you a good technique. So go down, that's the weight, should be a straight line. So the block has a weight of 700 newtons. And then we've got a normal reaction force and a frictional force that's holding the block in place. So what we can do is this. Extend this line, this N, so that's still N. And basically close this triangle off. And because this line, this dashed line that I've just drawn is parallel with the F, that's okay. It's like we've transposed it and moved it in to complete the triangle. I'll show you what this means. So that's a right angle. So 700 is our hypotenuse. This angle is 30 degrees, which means this angle is 90, which means this angle I'm drawing now is the 60 degrees. Just get rid of those. So consequently, this angle is 30. And in future, this angle that I've just drawn in is always equivalent to the angle that you're given. So now we can find the normal reaction force. So that would be the 700, the magnitude, multiplied by, and uh, because N is adjacent to the angle, it's cos 30. And then the frictional force F is opposite the angle, so that would be 700. Sine 30. Put those in your calculator. And we get 606 newtons. And 350 newtons. Feel free to practice that one again. I've got another example on the next page, which we can look at now. So same again. This block has a weight of 500 newtons, and we're going to calculate N and F again. So weight comes from the center of the block, 500 newtons. So I know that that's N and that's F. And this angle is 40 degrees. So this is the normal reaction and this is the frictional force parallel to the ramp. You can draw this if you wish. But once, you, once you've got the technique, you don't really need to. So calculate the normal reaction. So the normal reaction would be the magnitude, 500, multiplied by cos 40, and the frictional force is 500, and it's opposite the angle, so it's sine 40. If you're confused as to why the cos and sine work like this, this is how we're figuring out the, the components, then please go back and watch my video on resolving vectors. So I'll put this into our calculator. We get 383 newtons and 321 newtons. Hopefully that's okay. If you need to practice, feel free to do it again. That side, let's move on. So I need to give you an equation, P equals FV, power, is equal to force times velocity. If you already know this, that's great. If not, power is measured in watts or joules per second. Force is obviously in newtons and velocity is meters per second. So we're going to use this equation on the next question plus what we've just talked about. So let's move on. If you want to have a go at this, please do. Just pause the video. 
So this car generates a useful power of 8.2 times 10 to the 4 watts. We've got the car's mass and we know that it's travelling at a steady speed up the ramp. And we need to use P equals FV, but to use F we need to know the force that's parallel to the ramp. So we need to use the technique we've just learnt. So the weight acts down. So the mass of this car is 1050 kilograms, so we need to multiply that by 9.81 to give us the weight, which is 10,300.5 newtons. And we need the component parallel to the ramp. So we want this one that I've just drawn, this one. So this angle is the same. So to get the component parallel to the ramp, we just do the 10,300.5 multiplied by sine of 18. So that gives us a force of 3,183 newtons. So when we use our equation, P equals FV, that's our force, P equals FV. So the velocity is the power, 8.2 times 10 to the 4, divided by the force, which is, sorry, 3183. Put that in your calculator and you'll get 25.8 meters per second, which rounds to 26, which is actually very fast. Right, let's move on. So a bit of a tricky question this. If you want to have a go at it, please do. Just pause the video. And then I'll show you how to work through this. So a ski lift pulls a car of mass 1200 kilograms up a hill of length 200 meters. There's a constant frictional force of 2000 newtons, always acting against the motion. And the first thing we want to do is calculate the tension in the cable as the car moves at a constant speed. So let's have a look. So the tension is going to act up the ramp. So we need to know which forces are acting down the ramp. So one of the forces is the friction, the 2000 newtons. I'll just put two kilonewtons. Then we've got the component of the weight that's parallel to the ramp. So the weight, we need the weight acting down. So it's 1200 kilograms. So we need to multiply the 1200 kilograms by 9.81, which gives us a weight acting down of 11,772 newtons. And we need the component that's parallel to the ramp. So this one. So the angle is 50 degrees. So the component that's parallel to the ramp is the 11,772 multiplied by sine 50. Put that in your calculator. You will get 9,018 newtons. We then need to add the 2,000 newtons from the frictional force to give us 11,018. Newtons. So that's the force acting down the ramp. Because the ski lift, the car, is travelling at a constant speed, the tension will be equal and opposite. So that, consequently, is the tension in the cable. Right, let's have a look at the next one. So as the car reaches the top of the hill, the cable snaps. The frictional force of 2,000 newtons is still applicable. Calculate the acceleration. So to do acceleration, we need force over mass. The question is, what is the force that we're dealing with? We know that the 2,000 newtons is still applicable. Only this time, because the car is travelling down the ramp, the frictional force would act up the ramp. And then we still need the component that's parallel to the ramp, the component of the weight, which we got earlier. 
which was the 9,018 newtons. Only this time, they're acting in opposite directions. So we need to do the 9,018, and this time subtract the 2,000 newtons. So that gives us a force, a resultant force, for our acceleration equation of 7,018 newtons. So the acceleration would be the force, the resultant force, which we just calculated to be 7,018 newtons, divided by the mass of 1,200 kilograms, which gives us an acceleration of 5.84 meters per second squared. Okay, let's see what's next. So we need to calculate the speed at the bottom of the hill and then calculate the time taken. So we can do this in one go just about. So down the ramp is positive. So let's do SUVA. If you're not sure on this, I've got a video on project the basics of projectile motion, the equations of constant acceleration, and there's a video on more complex problems. So the displacement down the ramp is 200 meters. The initial speed down the ramp when the when the cable snaps is zero. The final speed, V, and the acceleration is the 5.84 meters per second squared. And we also need time, so I'll just pop a T there as well. So we need an equation without without T to get V, so that would be V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS. And if we put our numbers in, so V is equal to the square root of, now U is 0, so that goes. So it's the square root of 2 times A times S. So 2 times acceleration, 5.84, multiplied by the distance, 200 meters, gives us a frighteningly fast velocity of 48 meters per second. Rounded up to two significant figures. Then we can do time using s equals ut plus half at squared. Obviously, the initial speed is zero, so it's just s equals half at squared, and rearrange to find t. So t is equal to 2s over a square root. So that's 400. Divided by the acceleration, 5.84. Square root gives us a time, which I'll actually put over here, of 8.3 seconds. If you want to do any of the problems again, just rewatch the video, rewind, pause, attempt, and then you can check your answers against the solutions. Okay, thanks for listening. Take care. Bye-bye.